Yep, raccoons are domesticating themselves and it's starting to get a little bit weird. Next time you see a raccoon in your yard, take a close look. They might not look like they should. Raccoons are experiencing domestication syndrome when they're in close contact with people. This is a term used to apply to the weird changes we see in animals that are domesticated. In dogs, we're really familiar with this. We'll see floppy ears, interesting coloring, curly tails, and they start to look very juvenile. They develop shorter snouts. This was previously studied in foxes. Yes, around 60 years ago, a Russian scientist decided to want to figure out if we could domesticate a fox to try to understand our relationship with dogs. Also, you can still get a domesticated fox, although they aren't exactly dogs. They're more like cats, and it's difficult to train them to use a litter box, but you can have one. Animals that were selected for traits that made them better with humans also ended up having a dog-like appearance. They retained juvenile characteristics, developed a rounder face. This was the first fox that showed flappy ears. They also bred foxes that were less comfortable with people, and they ended up getting longer legs and longer teeth. They ended up looking less juvenile, and these were traits associated with personality. Now this is far from the first time it's happened, and it certainly does seem weird there's some genetic program for being docile. And we have certainly seen the opposite with dingoes that used to be dogs and are now just kind of feral, kind of wild. There's also an American dingo, if you didn't know that. And then for some animals, they just kind of wreck the program, like pigs. They're kind of cuddly and pink some of the times, but if they get out, they'll turn feral, get tusks, thicker skin, and just generally be terrifying. I will have you note that there is no such thing as a mini pig. Yes, there are some breeders who are trying to make them smaller, but the vast majority of the time it's just a pot-bellied pig and they can get easily up to 300 pounds or 800 or over a thousand. By the way, I am actually scared of pigs. Did you know that they can chew through bone? Their bite has a force of 300 PSI. Yeah, that baby pig you might have gotten could end up turning into an 800 pound monster. They sure are delicious though. Just because I love the PSA, a lot of breeders try to keep their pigs small by not feeding them enough, and if you do not feed your pig enough, they might just switch to the feral program and grow tusks and get super aggressive. Either way, don't have a pig in your house. They're, they're kind of cute, but no. And yeah, there may be some theories, but no one is entirely sure how cats conned us into this situation, but back to raccoons. In close contact with people, raccoons are selecting for domesticated traits. This could be that they're just more comfortable being around people, and if they run and scatter when there's people everywhere, they're not going to be very fit. It could also easily be that people feed them so gosh darn often, the ones that are better with people are just the ones that are capable of reproducing. This means that raccoons are getting shorter snouts, fatter faces, shorter legs, and you're more likely to see ones of unusual color if they're around people. There's a few reasons for that, not all of them good. One of them might just be genetic diversity issues. And while yeah, there are people that breed raccoons as pets, I really don't recommend it. They have the devil's mischief in them. Have you seen those paws? They can open cabinets, they can open doors. Would you have a pet raccoon? Let me know and follow for more.